This course will cover industrial serial data standards. In this course, we'll give an introduction to serial transceiver devices and their communication protocols, RS-232, RS-422, and RS-485, and applications. Serial transceivers enable two or more systems to communicate with each other over a wired medium serially, which means the port sends and receives bytes of information one bit at a time. Today there are many different types of serial transceivers. Some examples shown on the picture in this slide. RS-232, the standard was introduced in 1962. RS-485, the standard was published in 1983. USB 1.0 development started in 1994 by Intel and the USB Implementers Forum. It debuted in 1995 with data rates of 12 megabits per second. M12 for industrial sensors. Firewire or IEEE 1394. Controller area network. And RJ45 for Ethernet. RS-232 is a standard for transmission of data. It formally defines the signals connecting between a DTE, data terminal equipment, such as a computer terminal, and a DCE, data circuit terminating equipment or data communication equipment, such as a modem or a printer. It is widely used in programmable logic controllers, human machine interfaces, HMI, Computer Numerically Controlled Machine Tools, CNC, Medical Equipment, Headless Systems, that's servers without a monitor or a keyboard, Routers, Laboratory Automation or Surveying Equipment, VFDs and Servo Drives, Point of Sale, Instrumentation, etc. HMI uses RS-232 interface for download and configuration. A multimeter uses RS-232 for interface with automated test equipment or a PC or notebook computer. And a point-of-sale terminal uses RS-232 to communicate with a thermal printer and barcode reader. The RS-232 standard is defined by the Telecommunications Industry Association, TIA, and Electronic Industries Association, EIA. The TIA EIA 232 is an unbalanced, single ended, single drop point to point interface with the signal referenced to ground. The standard defines a logic 1, also known as MARC, with a voltage between minus 3 volts and minus 15 volts, and a logic 0, also known as a space, with a voltage between plus 3 volts and plus 15 volts for the receiver side. For the transmitter side, the output needs to be plus or minus 5 volts to plus or minus 15 volts. Voltages between plus or minus 3 volts are invalid, providing a noise margin of plus or minus 2 volts. Outputs transmitting less than plus or minus 5 volts, but received as bigger than plus or minus 3 volts, are compatible, but not compliant. There is an absolute maximum of plus or minus 25 volts for all RS-232 pins. In common practice, logic 0 and 1 levels are typically as low as plus or minus 5 volts and as high as plus or minus 12 or plus or minus 15 volts. The RS-232 standard defines a maximum cable length of 50 feet, but transmission has gone more than this distance with repeaters to boost the signal strength and a quality shielded cable length of up to 10,000 feet. This chart shows typical distances and data rates with shielded and unshielded cable lengths for 24 gauge wire under typical conditions. Here are some of the terms which are associated with serial transceivers. DTE, data terminal equipment, is an end instrument that converts user information into signals or reconverts the received signal. 
DCE, data communication equipment, like a printer or a modem. UART is a universal asynchronous receiver transmitter. These are the two types of connectors of the RS-232 interface, the 9-pin and 15-pin. Here is an example of an RS-232 transceiver with three transmitters and five receivers for a thermal printer application. There are several transmit-receive connection options of RS-232. They are interface without handshaking, partial handshaking, and full handshaking. Handshaking is when a pause is inserted to allow time to process or when the CTS or clear to send cannot handle new requests. Handshaking is a flow control that is implemented through both software and hardware implementation. An RS-232 interface without handshaking uses one transmitter and one receiver. With partial handshaking, it uses four transmitters and two receivers. With full handshaking, it uses three transmitters and three receivers. Maxim RS-232 can have 136 different transceiver configurations. The auto shutdown feature limits current draw to one microamp when the cable is not connected. The receiver input voltage would be between minus 0.3 volts and plus 0.3 volts for more than 30 seconds. Auto Shutdown Plus also looks at the signal present on the receiver. If no signal, then it will go into shutdown mode. Whenever any receiver input is greater than plus or minus 2.7 volts or the cable is reconnected, it will come out of shutdown mode. Other features are force on, force off, and invalid. Force on is used to override auto shutdown and keeps the transmitters and receivers on. Force off is used to override force on and auto shutdown and turns off the charge pump circuit to save power. Invalid functions as a valid signal detector and is helpful as a debug port. This is an example of an RS-232 transceiver device, the MAX 13234E and MAX 13237E family is the fastest RS-232 transceiver on the market. These parts, MAX 3221E and MAX 3223E, are examples of RS-232 transceivers having flexible options of force on, force off, and invalid. RS-422 is an improved version of RS-232. RS-422 uses a differential electrical signal as opposed to the unbalanced signals referenced to ground with RS-232. RS-422 uses twisted pair cable to reduce the noise and it uses signal balancing to transmit data. With this method, the data is able to transmit for a longer distance with faster data rates. With RS-422, the data can transmit up to 10 megabits per second at 50 feet or 100 kilobits per second at 4,000 feet. RS-422 is capable of multi-drop capability, which limits up to 10 slaves on the data line. RS-422 was commonly used as RS-232 extenders, point to point but RS-485 is an improvement over RS-422. It increases the number of devices from 10 to 32 and defines the electrical characteristics necessary to ensure adequate signal voltages under maximum load. With this enhanced multi-drop capability, people can create networks of devices connected to a single RS-485 serial port. So RS-485 is a superset of RS-422. Thus, all RS-422 devices may be controlled by RS-485. RS-485 hardware may be used for serial communication with up to 4,000 feet of cable. This standard was published in 1983.
The noise immunity and multi-drop capability make RS-485 the serial connection of choice in industrial applications requiring many distributed devices networked to a PC or other controller for data collection, human-machine interface, or other operations. One can find RS-485 in many applications, such as PLCs, industrial sensors, building automation, etc. RS-485 is defined as a balanced digital signal for multipoint communication systems. This balanced differential signal is carried over a twisted pair of wires where one signal on one wire is the opposite of the other. Effectively, this cancels each other out, but with no net radiated EMI. Graphically, the top diagram shows the minimum and maximum voltage range for the RS-485's driver. If the driver's voltage is less than plus or minus 1.5 volts, there is no guarantee the receiver can detect the incoming data. The bottom diagram shows the working range of the RS-485 receiver. Signals falling below plus or minus 200 millivolts will be interpreted as no incoming signal or data. The RS-485 standard enables a network or common communication bus line with multiple devices based on a single plus 5 volt supply. The top diagram shows an RS-485 network where there is one transmitter with multiple receivers. The bottom diagram depicts a network where there are multiple transceivers. The table in this slide highlights the key electrical parameters for the RS-485 standard. The common bus voltage for RS-485 is between minus 7 volts and plus 12 volts, which is 7 volts below ground or 0 volts, and 7 volts above plus 5 volts. This means that the RS-485 transceiver will still operate normally as long as the voltage remains in this voltage range. The maximum number of transceivers on one common bus was originally defined as 32 maximum, but it is common today to see RS-485 transceivers capable of 256 transceivers. Due to differential signaling, the data rate was defined to be 100 kilobits per second over 1200 meters, or 4000 feet. Per the standard, data rates can be faster or slower depending on the application. For the driver portion of RS-485, the voltage range needs to fall between plus and minus 1.5 volts and plus and minus 5 volts. For the receiver portion, the sensitivity needs to meet a minimum of plus and minus 200 millivolts. This slide shows an RS-485 differential signal moving between the minus 7 to plus 12 volt common mode voltage range. The two signal lines represented by gray and turquoise lines are defined with respect to ground. The common mode voltage, as defined by the RS-485 standard, is the sum of the ground potential difference, common mode noise, and offset voltage of the driver. This chart shows the difference between RS-485, RS-422, and Profibus. Profibus, or Process Field Bus, is a communication standard built upon an RS-485 type transceiver. It is intended for industrial control networks. The Profibus specification covers the software protocol, the connector type, and a differential termination network. RS-485 parts are backward compatible and interchangeable with their RS-422 counterparts. However, RS-422 drivers should not be used in an RS-485 system. This slide shows a common RS-485 pinout. To summarize, in this course, we have given an introduction to serial transceiver devices and the RS-232, RS-422, and RS-485 standards and their applications. For more information on this topic, please go to our website at www.maximintegrated.com under Products, Interface, and Transceivers.
We hope you enjoy this video and see you again in another educational video of Maxim Integrated.